Between 1990 and 1999, 40 people were awarded acting trophies at the Academy Awards. Of those 40 wins, which ones do I think were the best? In this third video in my series Oscar Top 10, I'm going to choose the 10 best acting winners of the 1990s. Here we go. Number 10, Whoopi Goldberg, Ghost. Give it to her. Well, I will. I just want to feel it one more time in my finger. That's all. Give I'm the lady the chicken. I will. Hand her the check. You can do it. <sighs> Give her the check. I will. <laughs> Yes, the great Whoopi Goldberg might have been more deserving to win an Oscar for Steven Spielberg's The Color Purple, but she's always been one of my favorite actresses, and I've always adored Goldberg's sublime comic performance in the 1990 supernatural drama Ghost, starring Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. Goldberg has said it was Swayze who convinced the filmmakers to hire her to play medium Oda Mae Brown, and what an inspired casting choice she was, the clear standout in the film. She was the first African-American woman to win an acting Oscar since Hattie McDaniel more than 50 years earlier. And you can clearly see the excitement on Goldberg's face when they announce her name. I'm so proud to be here. I'm proud to be an actor. And I'm going to keep on acting. And thank you so much. Number nine, Daniel Day-Lewis, My Left Foot. Did you paint that? <laughs> can't take it. Sorry. He made my list of the 10 best acting Oscar wins of the 2010s with his role in Lincoln. He also made the list for the 2000s for his role in There Will Be Blood. And you better believe he made the 90s list too, Day-Lewis appearing in a 1989 film but winning his Oscar for My Left Foot in early 1990. This is the film that brought Day-Lewis worldwide attention as a phenomenal talent. So remarkable in his performance as the real-life Christy Brown, a man with cerebral palsy who learned to paint with only his left foot. Tom Cruise had a shot at winning the Best Actor trophy that night for Born on the Fourth of July, but it was Day-Lewis who came through victorious on his first of eventually three Academy Awards. I'm truly grateful to you that in honoring me with this award, you're encouraging Christy to carry on making his mark. Thank you very much indeed. Number eight. Holly Hunter, The Piano. You can't deny the power of Holly Hunter's haunting performance in Jane Campion's masterful 1993 drama, The Piano. Also starring Harvey Keitel and Sam Neill, as well as the amazing Anna Paquin, who won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for the same film, The Piano announced Campion as a major director and her Oscar-winning screenplay for The Piano gave Holly Hunter the best role of her career as a mute woman living in mid-19th century New Zealand. Hunter was double nominated that night, also for The Firm in the Supporting Actress category, but she was always going to win her Academy Award for The Piano. Jane Campion, I, I love you, I love you. Thank you so much for giving me a character and an experience that was so difficult to say goodbye to. Number seven, Martin Landau, Ed Wood. What happened? How dare that asshole bring up Karloff? You think it takes talent to play Frankenstein? It's all on makeup and then grunting. Yes, Samuel L. Jackson should have won a competitive Oscar by now. And yes, his nominated performance in Pulp Fiction was more than deserving of a supporting actor victory but I've always adored this fantastic win for Martin Landau for the role of Bella Lugosi in Tim Burton's mesmerizing black and white biopic, Ed Wood. Lugosi struggled so much in his career after being typecast as Count Dracula, and Landau brings the man to glorious life with great humor and intelligence. Yes, Samuel L. Jackson said shit when his name wasn't announced that night, but his career didn't suffer by any means in losing an Academy Award, and Landau, who was on his third Oscar nomination with Ed Wood, couldn't have asked for a better role to earn his trophy for. I talked to uh, Tim Burton today in New York, and uh, I want to finish a conversation. Thanks, Tim, for giving me the part of my life. Number six, Nicolas Cage leaving Las Vegas. To tell you the truth, I'm a little shaky right now. Uh, I had brain surgery. Why don't I go get some lunch? And then, 
Well, well, come back and take care of it then. It's hard to believe that in his long and ridiculously prolific career, Nicolas Cage has only managed two Oscar nominations and one win. But what a fantastic win it turned out to be for his brilliant portrayal of a suicidal alcoholic who moves to Las Vegas to drink himself to death. Co-starring Elizabeth Shue in an equally compelling lead performance that received a Best Actress nomination, Leaving Las Vegas showed Cage in an unflattering and emotionally devastating light he was more than up to the task to portray. Like most of the winners on this list, Cage was the favorite to win in this category, and I've always loved Shue's failed attempt to get Cage a standing ovation after his name was announced. I know it's not hip to say it, but I just love acting, and I hope that, uh, I hope that there will be more encouragement for uh, alternative movies where we can experiment and fast forward into the future of acting. Number five, Jodie Foster, The Silence of the Lambs. You see a lot, Doctor. But are you strong enough to point that high-powered perception at yourself? What about it? Why don't you, why don't you look at yourself and write down what you see? Maybe you're afraid to. Only the occasional actor receives two Oscars in less than five years and Jodie Foster managed the difficult feat in a mere three. Her performance in 1988's The Accused, absolutely terrific. Her turn in 1991's The Silence of the Lambs, a stunning career highlight. This is one of my favorite movies of all time, so you might be hearing about one other actor from the film shortly, but let no one diminish Foster's much-deserved Oscar win for her powerful portrayal of FBI trainee Clarice Starling on the hunt for a serial killer. Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon were both very much in contention to win Best Actress for their performances as the iconic Thelma and Louise, but they likely split enough votes to propel Foster to her second fantastic Oscar win. I'd like to dedicate this award to all of the women who came before me who never had the chances that I've had, and the survivors and the pioneers and the outcasts, and my blood, my tradition. Number four, Frances McDormand, Fargo. Okay. Are you sure? Because, I mean, how do you know? Because see, the crime I'm investigating, the perpetrators were driving a car with dealer plates, and they called someone who works here, so it'd be quite a coincidence if they weren't, you know, connected. She's taken home the Best Actress trophy three times now, more recently for Nomadland and three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, but my favorite McDormand Oscar win has to be for her role of pregnant Sheriff Marge in the Coen Brothers' flat-out masterpiece of a movie, Fargo. This character is an original creation from the inside out, the kind of courageous comic performance that only rarely gets recognized at the Academy Awards, but thank God they recognized it this time. One of my favorite parts of her win that year was that glorious strut McDormand does on the stage as she walks up to receive her trophy. <laughs> it is impossible to maintain one's composure in this situation. What am I doing here? especially considering the extraordinary group of women with whom I was nominated. <laughs> Number three, Joe Pesci, Goodfellas. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh, I'm here to fucking amuse you. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? My favorite Oscar win in either of the supporting categories in the 1990s is no question Joe Pesci for his commanding and unforgettable turn in Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas. As the violently unpredictable Tommy DeVito, Pesci doesn't steal the movie away from his gifted co-stars, like Robert De Niro and the late great Ray Liotta, but he sure demands the viewer's attention in his every hypnotic scene. So many actors are known to be long-winded in their Oscar acceptance speeches, but not Pesci. This is what he said upon receiving his trophy. Well, it's my privilege, thank you. Number two, Anthony Hopkins, the Silence of the Lambs. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. How many iconic performances do we get in a decade? The kind that stick around forever and ever, no matter how long it's been since you've seen the film. The 90s gave us a few, to be sure, but none quite like Anthony Hopkins' creepy, intelligent portrayal of Dr. Hannibal Lecter and Jonathan Demme's The Silence of the Lambs. His scenes with Jodie Foster crackle with intensity, and the later horrifying moments are the kinds that nightmares are made of. 
He might not be in the film long enough to warrant a Best Actor trophy at a mere 24 minutes of screen time, but really, who gives a shit? This is one of the best performances ever committed to film, and absolutely one of the most well-deserved Best Actor wins of all time. And I am greatly honored and tremendously moved. And I, God bless you all, thank you very much. Before we get to my top choice, here are the five runners up. Denzel Washington, Glory. The best of Washington's two Oscar wins is for his powerful turn in the marvelous historical epic, Glory. Jeffrey Rush, Shine. I couldn't reach the end of this video without giving a shout out to Rush's marvelous performance as the real life pianist, David Helfgott. Robin Williams, Good Will Hunting. After three previous losses, it was time for Williams to find Oscar victory for a splendid dramatic performance in Gus Van Zandt's film, Julia Binoche, The English Patient. My first ever Oscar race video was all about the night Binoche beat out that season's supporting actress frontrunner, Lauren Bacall, and in retrospect, what a great win it was for Binoche, who was dazzling in The English Patient from beginning to end. Tom Hanks, Philadelphia, and Forrest Gump. I can't decide which one I like better, so let's just go with a 15th place tie for Hank's nearly unprecedented back-to-back -back Oscar wins in the mid-1990s. And now, the time has come. Here we go. My choice for the number one acting win at the Oscars in the 1990s is for the woman who presented Anthony Hopkins with his Best Actor trophy. I'm talking Kathy Bates for her brilliant performance in Misery. But I didn't cheer. I stood right up and started shouting, this isn't what happened last week. Have you all got amnesia? They just cheated us. This isn't fair. He didn't get out of the cock-a-duty car. Let me state off the top that this is one of my favorite Oscar wins ever in the entire history of the Academy Awards. Bates not just playing, but completely inhabiting the weird, obsessive, terrifying, and tragic figure of Annie Wilkes in a way no other actress ever could. Her sweetness in the film's early scenes is so believable that when she turns later on and we see the horror this woman is capable of, Annie learning that the heroine of her favorite novel series has been killed off, the author Paul Sheldon, played by the great James Caan, healing from a car accident right there in her own home, there's little for the viewer to do but watch in sheer astonishment. I love this win because Kathy Bates was a mostly unknown film actress at the time, and instead of casting an A-lister, which he could have, Rob Reiner went with a gifted stage actress who could do the amazing part justice. I love this win because horror films are so rarely recognized in any category at the Academy Awards, let alone in the acting categories, and I love this win because Bates is still to this day one of the finest talents around. And in a career of so many landmark performances, how cool is it that her first, and arguably her best, earned her the well-deserved gold trophy? Kathy Bates is, in a word, perfect in misery, and it's my pick for the best acting Oscar win of the 1990s. I would like to thank my, my family, my friends, my mom at home, and my dad, who I hope is watching somewhere. I would like to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below what are your favorite acting Oscar wins from the 1990s? Is there anyone you think I left off the list? See you next time.